They were sons, fathers, husbands, and everything to their loved ones. Thank you for being here with us. I'm Lorenzo Hall. The six victims had their lives cut short, but their legacies will live on. Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes was 35, and Dorlian Raniel Castillo Cabrera was only 26. You remember, crews pulled their bodies from the river yesterday. Maynard Yasir Suazo Sandoval was 34, and Jose Minor Lopez was 35. The nonprofit group CASA, which is helping the victims' families, says another man, Miguel Luna, is among the dead, along with a man named Carlos. His full name has not yet been released. Well, sadly, we don't know if the remains of those four men will even be recovered. Crews can't see well through the murky water, only feeling for mangled metal by touch. Tonight, our Rafael Sanchez Cruz is in Baltimore, where massive cranes are arriving to try and clear some of that debris. There's still no timeline of when the channel to the Port of Baltimore will reopen, even though it's one of the busiest in the nation. However, help is on the way. We have a very long road ahead of us. Governor Westmore laying out his plan as Maryland officials focus on clearing debris and reconstruction following the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Clearing the channel and opening the vessel traffic to the port. Within hours of the request, the Biden administration granted $60 million in emergency funds through the program that states can turn to after natural disasters. These dollars are essential for us to proceed quickly and safely with the, the, with the de debris removal, the demolition, traffic operations, and other emergency needs. But that's not the only help Maryland is receiving. Senator Chris Van Hollen announced that the Army Corps of Engineers will cover the entire cost of clearing the channel is a priority given all the jobs that are associated with it, uh, all the small businesses, all the other businesses. And as the governor has pointed out, this is not just a Maryland issue. It's a national and global question. Right now, the U.S. Coast Guard says they're still in what they're calling the assessment process of the bridge removal. So that we can figure out how to cut the bridge into the right size pieces so that we can actually lift them with the crane. How long the removal process will take is still unclear, according to Governor Moore. If you think about what the dolly is, the dolly is almost as long as the Eiffel Tower. And the dolly has the key bridge on top of it. Senator Chris Van Hollen says he plans to introduce a bill in Congress that will help pay for the reconstruction costs not covered by the emergency funds approved by the Biden administration. At the Keybridge headquarters, Rafael Sanchez Cruz, WUSA 9. Also new tonight, we have some clarity about what's in the water. NTSB crews said they saw some kind of sheen on top of the water after Tuesday's collapse. Bottom line here, the experts say there's no need for concern. The Coast Guard says that might be due to a few liters of oil. That oil may have come from a thruster, which helped steer the ship into the port. The Coast Guard says 14 containers damaged in the accident contain soap, perfume, and some sort of resin material. Crews have placed booms around that ship to collect anything that comes from those containers. They've also installed equipment to monitor the air around that site. And again, the NTSB tells us the full investigation could take up to two years. We'll be updating you every step of the way. The Get Up DC team will pick up our coverage in the morning starting at 425. If you'd like to learn more right now, though, you can find all of our reporting in one place at WUSA 9 plus.